Learning objective two is about those adjusting entries that we call uh, deferrals. So uh, a deferral means that we're gonna wait, right? To defer is to postpone, to delay, to wait. Um, and it makes perfect sense because what are these deferrals? Well, they start as assets, right? And then we have to wait to use the asset and then we can expense it. And it starts <clears throat> as unearned revenue. Well, it starts as a liability, but we have to wait. And once we deliver the goods to, or the services to the customer, then we can say it's our revenue. So that's what the issue of deferrals is really about. And again, prepaid uh, expenses is gonna be first. There are three of these that we're gonna be looking at. Unearned revenue, there's only one. So these are the four deferrals that you gotta know for learning objective two. Okay, so again, um, prepaid expenses as your book uh, classifies it, these are basically, they start as assets. And after we use these assets, we can expense what we've used. What do you already know from this list? You already know about prepaid insurance. You already know about supplies. You already know about uh, buildings and equipment. You've seen all of this. What you haven't seen is a couple of other accounts that are listed as examples, but are not, there's no follow-up in the book for these. So uh, there's something called prepaid rent. So it works like prepaid, it works like prepaid insurance. And there's something called prepaid advertising. That's literally, these are real accounts that are asset accounts. Um, and again, it's, just, it's all prepaid advertising. But once we've used up that advertising, you'll have an advertising expense. <clears throat> so uh, your book focuses on three, um, the, uh, the supplies account, the insurance account, and the equipment account. <clears throat> so those three accounts are going to be looked at in detail here in Learning Objective 2. Okay. So how do we adjust once we do find that we've used up an asset? What's the adjustment like? Well, it's actually quite simple. We're going to debit the appropriate expense. And then we are going to credit the asset that's affected. And you're going to see again, three, three of these that are going to be explained. So again, debit the expense, credit the asset. And we're going to look at three. First one is supplies. Supplies starts as an asset. At the beginning of the month, <clears throat> you might recall Sierra Corporation had $2,500 of supplies, right? So we're at the end of the month. They count up their supplies. They only have $1,000 of supplies left. When, they, when you see this word, this little phrase on hand, it simply means what's there in front of them. So obviously they started with $2,500 of supplies at the end of the month, they only have $1,000 of supplies left. They've used up the difference. If they used up the difference, they can expense the difference. And so the adjusting entry for October 31st, again, it's always the end of the month. This is one of the reasons why you can tell it's an adjusting entry. These are always done at the end of the month or the end of the year, whatever the other period is. Debit to a supplies expense, credit to supplies. Remember the last slide, debit the expense, credit the asset. This is, a, this is the specific supplies expense account. This is the specific asset account. How we get the $1,500 is we started with 2,500 of supplies at the beginning of the month. At the end of the month, we only have $1,000 of supplies left, which means we've used up that. If we used it, we can expense it. This is the journal entry. You know, whatever happens in the journal is going to get posted to the ledger. And so you'll see in the ledger supply, the supplies balance was adjusted. And so it shows a thousand dollars of supplies that we actually have. So now the, this asset account reflects exactly what we have, thousand dollars of supplies. And at the end of the month, because we've used those supplies, we can now have a supplies expense of $1,500, because that's what we used. <clears throat> so the adjusting entry helped us, you know, adjust those accounts to make them correct. 
Now they reflect the correct uh, amounts in each. Remember, prepaid insurance is an asset. It's a current asset because it's going to be used quickly. And you right, me, might remember Sierra Corporation had a $600 policy for a whole 12 years. You know how it works. You buy insurance now, it's for the whole year. So you can't expense it until you use it because it's still it's an asset for the whole year. Well, uh, obviously insurance, uh, it's go you're going to be using that insurance policy, a portion of it every month. So if you paid $600 for a year's insurance and there's 12 months to a year, um, that means $50 of insurance is going to be used every single month. So for the month of October, which is what we're focused on here for Sierra Corporation, it's October the 31st, they need to do an adjusting entry. They can expense the insurance that they've used, $50 insurance expense. Notice the expense is specific insurance expense and they credit prepaid insurance because they are lowering the value of this asset account that's the journal entry that occurs in october then it gets posted to the ledger you know how it works right so <clears throat> prepaid insurance is adjusted which means that there's only 550 dollars of prepaid insurance uh, left which is correct after that month and then of course, now we actually have a balance in insurance expense of 50 bucks. So that's the second one that you have to know. The third one deals with uh, something called depreciation, which if you continue in the course for Accounting 102, you're gonna learn actually how to do all of that because um, we, we do that in Accounting 102. However, what you need to know about it now is some, uh, there are accounts like buildings, like equipment, like motor vehicles that are, as you know, assets, they're property, plant, and equipment. However, when a company buys a truck, say it's UPS, when they buy a truck, uh, and they buy a lot of those trucks for sure, say it's a delivery truck. Um, the first thing they ask themselves is, how long are we going to use this truck? For a business, that's called a useful life of an asset. It would be no different if I owned a pizzeria and I bought a new pizza oven. I ask the same question, how long am I going to use this asset? Because every asset has a useful life. Once that truck has been driven a long time, it's gonna to need to be replaced. Can't just keep driving an inefficient truck. Can't be driving a truck that breaks down all the time. How can you promise your packages if your UPS on time, if your truck is breaking down? Can't do it. Same thing with a pizza parlor. If I have a pizza oven, I might use it for 10 years, maybe 15, but eventually it's not gonna be heating the pizza properly. It's gonna take longer and longer to bake a pizza. Hey, I got, I got customers. They're not gonna wait an hour for a pizza. Right. So eventually these things become, uh, they need to be replaced. Right. And so the useful life issue is one of those important things because when we actually buy the equipment, when we buy the vehicle, we're only buying it for a useful life. And then we're not going to be able to use it anymore. One of the things that property plant and equipment is important is that everything that a, a business has for property plant and equipment is directly related to selling their, their goods, right? Without that pizza oven, there'd be no pizzas. There'd be no pizza parlor because you're not gonna sell raw pizza. Although that might be a thing someday, who knows? Um, imagine UPS without any delivery trucks. Uh, you would give ups, ha 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 ha. Get it? You know, okay. They would need to give up. Um, and so it's all directly related to their revenue. And so that means if it's, if it's part of generating revenue, it can be expensed over time. That expense process is very long. So we have to slowly expense it over the course of its useful life. Uh, motor vehicles, like I said, could last, you know, four, five, six years uh, for a business that uses it a lot. That pizza oven could last 10 to 20 years. I don't know. Uh, 
And so that's the process in which we can start expensing it. Depreciation is that process, okay? But it depends on those types of factors. So what do we do? Well, at the end of every month, when we have property, plant, and equipment, in which case Pierre Corporation has equipment, we know that it will have depreciation on that equipment. In this chapter, there's no calculations to do. They simply give you the amount. Uh, that's the yearly basis, but we're only looking at October. So when you divide it by 12, it's 40 bucks a month. Um, and so this is the amount that we can depreciate, we can expense of that office equipment through depreciation. So at the end of the month, October 31st, we are going to have a depreciation expense for 40 bucks, but we don't actually affect the equipment account. There's actually a special account that's created that really sits right underneath the equipment account. It's called accumulated depreciation for equipment. This account, again, is a special account that belongs underneath the equipment account. And this is where the credit, the offsetting credit goes. That's different than what we saw in supplies. Supplies got the credit. That's different than what you saw in prepaid insurance. Prepaid insurance got the credit. Well, those are current assets. They are gonna be used quickly. Uh, equipment is different. Equipment is different. The process of expensing those, uh, that equipment is different. It's much, much longer. And so we use something called an accumulated depreciation account to accept the credits for every time there is a depreciation expense. So how does it look like, that's the journal entry. How does it look like in the ledger? As you see, the equipment account is not affected. We still have $5,000 of equipment on the books here. What is affected, as you see, right underneath equipment, because this, is a, this always piggybacks the equipment account, we are shown that the depreciation, the accumulated depreciation on that equipment has 40 bucks, okay? Which means that based on the month of October, when they've used that equipment for business purposes, they have an expense of $40, which means they've actually used $40 of value of that 5,000, which shows up in the accumulated depreciation account. What you and I know uh, about accumulated depreciation, we'll, we'll know a lot more in the future, but it is considered an asset account because it's put right underneath equipment. However, asset accounts have debit balances. Accumulated depreciation has a credit balance. And so it's dubbed a contra asset. Any type of account that's a contra account is an account with an opposite normal balance to the other accounts. So all assets have debit balances, but a contra asset has a credit balance. How would it show on the balance sheet? Well, you've probably seen this before. We've done balance sheets in chapters one and two. You saw the equipment is listed first, and then we subtracted out the accumulated depreciation. So of course, the older this is, the bigger this number is gonna be. So in this case, we only used $40 of the equipment which means the, this 4960 is what we call the book value, right? So everyone wants to know, a lot of people get involved in, in selling a car, their car, or trading in their car, or whatnot, they wanna know the book value. This is how a book value is calculated. You'll learn more about it in chapter nine in Accounting 102, but it's basically the, the amount that we spent on the asset minus the, the depreciation that's accumulated on that asset. The difference is a book value of the asset. So you'll see this uh, for sure often in accounting 102. So again, when we come to prepaid expenses, they start as assets, they end as expenses, okay? Um, we learned the adjusting entry is to debit the specific expense and to credit the specific asset with the exception of equipment. There's a special account called accumulated depreciation. 
Uh, what if we didn't do that? Well, if we didn't do that, our, our financial statements are going to be uh, very bad, right? Because number one, we're gonna be showing those assets on the books when we don't have them. So our assets are gonna be overstated. They're gonna look more valuable than they are because we say we have more than we have. And even worse is those expenses would be missing. So if your expenses are missing, they're not being subtracted out of revenue. And that means your profit looks really big when in fact it's not because you forgot those expenses. So expenses being understated leave, lead to, always lead to higher profits, higher net income. And that's just the wrong message, right? It's, it's wrong on its face. Thankfully, there's only one accrued revenue to worry about. Uh, I'm sorry, um, unearned revenue to worry about. Uh, I'm already accruing in my head, but it's just, we're still on deferrals. I'll have to wait, apparently. So unearned revenue, as you know, is a liability account. We receive the cash from the customer, and we owe the customer for the service that was provided them. Um, this happens in a lot of different industries, okay? Um, as you see here, unearned revenue occurs in a bunch of different ways. Uh, oftentimes, you know, landlords can be receiving rent up front, um, but that's, but they haven't delivered on that. So it's unearned rent revenue. Uh, airline tickets are always selling um, well ahead of time, well ahead of your flight. Okay? So if you're buying a ticket now to travel for New Year's and you buy that airline ticket, guess what? That's unearned revenue. That's unearned ticket revenue for the airline, they owe you a flight. It's a liability to them until you get on the plane or until the plane leaves, right? Um, and so that's an unearned revenue. Certainly that happens with magazine subscriptions. We're always paying up front for 12 issues. We get one at a time, right? Um, and so the money that they receive up front for that yearly subscription is unearned revenue. They'll earn a little bit of it every month. And any time that you pay up front, any type of deposit, whether it's for to take a cruise, not that I would recommend one now, take a cruise, um, vacation, even buy season tickets to a sporting event, you know, sporting team, uh, buy concert tickets, anything that you would do up front. Um, all of that's unearned revenue. They owe you the cruise. They owe you the vacation. They owe you those games that you paid for. Right? They owe you the concert that you paid for. All of this is unearned. So again, all of it is a liability. So the question is, when do they earn it? Well, when they deliver, when they deliver, right? Uh, when that plane takes off, they've earned it. It should not be a liability when the plane takes off. When they've delivered enough magazines, they've earned it. When they've actually, when the cruise has left, right? Or when the concert or ball game has happened, they've earned that portion of the money. Well, what's it doing sitting on your books as a liability? Well, you're going to move it. That's, that's the adjustment here. So what we're doing is we are lowering the liability. So the debit to unearned revenue, the liability account is unearned revenue. So we're going to debit the unearned revenue account, which is a liability, and move that money to revenue, right? Because it's now earned. Remember, revenue is earned. Unearned revenue is a liability because you haven't earned it yet. But once you earn it, you got to move it over. That's the adjustment. Uh -huh. So we're, we're debiting the unearned revenue account. We're crediting the service revenue account or whatever revenue account the company has. And we're dealing with Sierra Corporation here. You might remember way back in early October, R Knox plopped down 1200 bucks and said, look, you know, this is for uh, tours that you're gonna, that we're gonna have between now and, and uh, the end of December. So they accepted the $1,200 and they, um, as unearned service revenue, okay. 
So unearned service revenue has this $1,200 sitting there. Well, at the end of the month, the adjustment is you got to check. Did we earn any of this stuff? Because if we earned it, it doesn't belong in unearned service revenue. It belongs in revenue. And lo and behold, what they discovered is $400 of this $1,200 has actually been earned in October. So the adjusting entry is a debit to unearned service revenue, which lowers the liability, credit to service revenue, which increases revenue. Once it's posted into uh, the ledger, as you know, the unearned service revenue account, which is a liability, that liability will be lowered to $800. It's only lowered because the adjusting entry came in. You finally recognize you did work. And then that adjustment is going to increase your revenue for that period. Because now that $400 counts as revenue for October. And so look, your revenue went up. And that would be important reflection on your income statement. So again, very, very critically, uh, what you just learned is just one uh, thing here on, a, on our revenue. You're going to debit the unearned revenue account, credit the revenue account. What if you didn't do that? Well, then it looks like you still owe the customers a whole bunch of stuff that you don't. And even worse, your revenue would be low, lower than it really is. And if your revenue is low, your profit's going to be lower. And so that's a big problem. That's a huge problem. Your book has its own demonstration that I think you should study. The wonderful news, this is on page 162, by the way, so if you have your book open, page 162. Um, the wonderful thing about adjusting entries is they're always the same pair that repeats, okay? So it's always gonna be supplies, expense, and supplies, always. It's always gonna be insurance, expense, and prepaid insurance, always. So if that's the adjusting entry you need to do, you already know what two accounts are gonna be affected because they always follow each other. Okay, that's the beauty of this. Uh, it repeats. So we're at the end of March for Hammond. This is what their, um, this is what their trial balance looks like. They have a $3,600 balance in prepaid. They have $2,800 in supplies. Obviously they have equipment uh, that has depreciated some already and they have unearned service revenue of 9,200. They did an analysis, they had to double check everything at the end of March to make sure they have everything, and look what they found. They found that insurance expired, meaning that it got used. $100 of insurance expired, so $100 of insurance needs to be expensed. They only have $800 of supplies left. So they started with 2,800, they only have 800 left. Again, that difference needs to be expensed. The equipment that they have here depreciated $200 this month. So that has to be expensed. And the very last thing they noticed is $4,000 of this $9,200 was earned. They actually did those that work. So that has to be adjusted. So obviously they want you to prepare the adjusting entries here for these deferrals. So again, insurance, it's going to be a very simple, again, I would, the only thing I don't like about this is you, of course, you need to have that date. So again, on the 31st of March, this is what we're looking at. You'd have an adjusting entry, a debit to insurance expense for 100, credit to prepaid insurance for 100. Okay. These pairs are the same all the time in the adjusting entry process. Guaranteed. Supplies are only $800. If you started with 2,800 and you only got 800, you use the difference, you use 2,000. So you, again, you would have the date here. You would have a supplies expense of $2,000. That's a debit. Supply uh, credit supplies of 2,000. These accounts are always gonna be together in the adjusting process, I can guarantee you. Depreci uh, equipment depreciated at $200 a month. Um, Again, we already know that we're gonna have a depreciation expense listed for the 31st of March. I hate that they don't have the dates here. You can tell because I'm writing it, right? So a debit to, to depreciation expense and a credit to commit depreciation for equipment. They forgot this piece here. So I would add 
a dash and the word equipment, which I really can't uh, spell here on my laptop, but this is the actual formal name of the account. That's what should be here. And the very last thing is $4,000 of this $9,200 was, uh, was earned. They actually perform that work now. So this needs to be lowered. Unearned service revenue needs to be lowered by $4,000. And this $4,000 has to be part of their revenue. Again, the month, the date goes here. Unearned service revenue got a debit of $4,000, which lowers this amount to $5,200 in the ledger. And service revenue gets a nice increase of $4,000 because now they've earned it. Now they've earned it. Okay, let me stop briefly, go back to our main screen. Um, get any questions you might have. I tried my best to sort of explain in detail uh, why we're doing that. So these are considered deferrals because we have to wait to use the asset before we expense it. And we have to wait to perform the service to take the liability down and call it revenue. Notice that all of these are affecting either revenue or expenses, yes? And that's what it said. It's gonna affect our, an income statement account, which is a revenue and expense account and it's gonna affect a balance sheet account, which is either an asset or a liability account. That's why these things need to be adjusted. You feeling okay? Um, the good news is there's only three accruals to, lo to learn. Accruals are, are not that bad. There's only three of them. So are you ready? Put up a fight for these accruals. No, yeah. I'll defer it. Oh, stop, stop, no more bad jokes. Stop being corny, okay. All right, let's continue on with our learning objective three. This is the last thing for today. Um, we are preparing the adjusting entries for what we call accruals, okay? And again, uh, both a balance sheet account and an income statement account are gonna be affected by these as well. Always works that way, okay. So first of all, um, what are the accruals? Well, we need to make sure that all the revenues are recorded, even though we, not, we might not collect the money till later. Uh, but we also have to make sure the expenses are, are recorded, even though we might not pay them until later. So there's one of these revenues to look at and two different expenses to look at. Those are the three that we'll be learning. Accrued revenues is very easy. They're very easy because you perform the service, which means it's revenue, but you haven't received it yet in cash. That's easy. Um, and that happens often. We're going to be, your book focuses on several things here, gives you examples, but we're only going to be looking at services that were performed, but not, the cash was not received. Okay, cash was not received. That's an easy fix. It's a very, very easy fix. We have to create an accounts receivable and we have to record the revenue. That's it. That's the only thing we gotta do here. So uh, again, we're gonna debit the accounts receivable and we're gonna credit the service revenue account. That's all we're doing in this adjustment. And here we go. October, Sierra Corporation performed, so it's, it's already did the work, performed guided services for $200 that were not billed before October 31st. So on October 31st, they need to adjust to make sure that this $200 is part of their revenue. And also bill the client, which means they're an accounts receivable. So the adjusting entry would simply be a debit to accounts receivable for 200 and a credit to service revenue for 200, that fixes that. And then of course, from the journal, it'll get posted into the ledger. And so you'll see accounts receivable now has a balance. And look what happened. We had another $200 of revenue that were added here. And so our revenue balance is much higher now because of the adjustment process. It's gone from 10,000 to 10,600. That's a good thing. Okay. And again, the income statement is the very first thing that we create or prepare. 
and revenue is the first thing on it. So this is good. It's an up-to-date account. Um, so again, uh, that's the adjusting entry. We debit the uh, receivable, credit the service revenue. What if we didn't do it? Well, if we didn't do it, uh, we wouldn't have shown that accounts receivable, which means our assets would have would be represented, would underrepresented, would look smaller than they really are. And the worst uh, case here is that we would be missing that revenue. It would not show on our statement. Remember, our profit comes from the revenue. So every penny of revenue earned in a month or in a period needs to be there, needs to be there. We're in the business of, of making money, making profits. Accrued expenses, basically the expense happened in that month or in that period of time, but you haven't paid it yet. Okay, um, and this happens a lot. The book has several uh, examples here. What we're gonna be looking at is two in particular. Um, uh, salaries, I already gave you that example of if, if you work during the last week in October, but you're, you're not going to get paid in November, uh, that's a perfect example of accrued expense. I want to give you an understanding, though, of this interest, um, if you're interested. Uh, but on any loan that a business has, uh, interest is going to pile up on any loan. And accordingly, the interest on the loan not the loan, but the interest on the loan is an expense, okay, is an expense. So there's something called interest expense, and it's for interest on any loans that the business has. They can expense it during that period. So the book is going to first give you a look at the interest, um, second, salaries. So again, when, when we record an accrued expense, uh, of course, we want to recognize the expense for that particular period. So that's going to happen. But we're not paying it yet, so we actually have to set up a payable. We have to record the liability that we actually owe this. Right? We have the expense on the books, yes, but we owe it. We're going to pay it later. So again, we're going to be debiting the specific expense and crediting that liability for it, okay? Let's take a look at interest first. So <clears throat> Sierra Corporation, you might remember at the very beginning of October, October 1st, they had this three month note payable for five grand, right? Now, I think I explained to you how notes payable work. Um, a notes payable, they get the cash, in this case, they got the cash on October the 1st, they don't have to pay the loan back until three months from this date. Not only do they pay the loan back on that date, which happens to be January the 1st, because you've got October 1st, so November 1st, December 1st, January 1st, that's three months. So they need, they're gonna pay that note back on January the 1st, the $5,000 is gonna be paid back and all the interest is paid at that day. So notes payable, everything gets paid on the day it's due, okay, maturity date. However, they had this note, they will have this note for all of the month of October, all of the month of November, all of the month of December. <clears throat> and so literally any interest that is accrued on that note in October should be expensed in October. Any interest that's accrued on that note in November should be expensed in November, and the same for December. That's how we look at it, okay? So um, let's find out how we can tell how much interest is going to be accrued for October. Well, first of all, we have to know that this rate, ha uh, this loan, rather, this note, had an annual rate. So the word annual, 12%, that's annual. That's all year, all 12 months. This is, uh, this is a three month loan, but this is an annual rate. Even more interesting is this is only, we're only interested in what's happening for October. So we actually only wanna know one month's interest. So $5,000 is the amount of the loan times 12%, which is the annual rate, times one month over 12 months. $50 of interest should be 
expensed in October on this note. And that's how you would, this is how you calculate it. The amount of the loan times the annual rate times one month over 12. Okay, because in every single case in this book, um, you're only gonna need to really calculate the interest for the month that they want to expense. So what would it look like for October for Sierra Corporation? October 31st, they could expense $50 in interest. So interest expense is the name of that account, but they're gonna pay it later. When are they gonna pay it? January 1st, right? So they're gonna set up a liability, interest payable, interest payable. So this $50 is interest on this note, which is payable January 1st. That's the uh, journal entry. Uh, when it gets posted into the ledger, interest expense is now uh, has a balance and interest payable now has a balance. As you see, it's the only time these two accounts were affected through the entire month was through the adjusting process. Uh, like I said, salaries is pretty easy because everyone here um, has had a job and you kind of know how payroll works. You got to work first and then they pay you uh, in the next payroll, right? So Sierra Corporation pays bi-weekly. Uh, so they pay every two weeks. <clears throat> so the last paycheck in October was the 26th of October, this particular Friday here. And that pay period was for the week of the 15th and the week of the 22nd. So for these two week period of time, those employees got paid that Friday. Uh, how much do they get paid? They get $2,000 for a full week or 400 bucks a day. Well, as you see here, the next pay period is not until November. And the problem is three of the work days, the 29th, 30th, and 31st, by the way, they only work a five day week. Lucky. Um, the 29th, the 30th, and the 31st is, a, is October should be expensed to October, even though they're not gonna get paid until November 9th. So these three days at $400 a day, 1200 bucks, need to be expensed in October, but shown that they're gonna be paid next month or next pay period. So that's the adjustment that we do here. And the adjustment is quite simply a, a debit to salaries and wages expense. This is an expense for October. Notice the date, October 31st. Those three days of work happen to October. They should be expensed in October. Expense recognition principle. But we're not going to pay them until next paycheck, right? So we set up a liability account called salaries and wages payable. And that shows that we're going to pay that later. Right? Um, from the journal, it goes to the ledger. As you see, the ledger was updated. Um, this adjustment, this adjusting entry for these three days pushes the salaries of wages expense to $5,200 in total for the month. If we didn't do the adjustment, the expenses would only be 4,000 for salary wages. In other words, it would be wrong and it would be much lower. Again, if your expenses are lower than they should be, your profit looks bigger. And your owners are not gonna be happy to know that you lied to them about how big their profit was. Okay. So the adjustment means that we could be pretty damn sure <laughs> when we do report the profit and loss that it's accurate. Um, we set up the payable, which is a liability account, right? Because we, we owe this salaries or wages in the next check. And those are the three uh, accruals. Again, for, uh, for, for the accrued expenses, we debit the expense, but we credit the payable. Uh, if we didn't do that, our expenses would look really low. And again, if your expenses look low, your profit looks bigger. And when they find out that's not true, you're, you're gonna pay the price for it. Um, and then here, of course, it's on the slide, it says lab abilities, which might be if you have a dog, Labrador Retriever, um, but it's supposed to be liabilities. They clearly missed something. 
your liabilities would also uh, be understated because you you wouldn't be showing that you owed this money and you and you really would need to do that So um, you have a basic summary of all of all these things. The first, learning objective two, uh, were about the prepaid uh, expenses and unearned revenue. And what you just learned in learning objective three, with the accrued revenues and accrued expenses, there are only seven in total that you have to know. Four uh, from learning objective two, and the three that we just went over here in learning objective three. Those are the seven you have to know and practice. Okay. The do it exercise uh, from learning objective three is all the way on uh, page 170. So if you're on one page 170, you'll see this microcomputer uh, systems, uh, services rather, they began on August the 1st, 2017. And now it's the end of August and they want to prepare the monthly statement. So again, before they can prepare the statement, um, okay, uh, once they prepare the statement, they need to do the income statement first, as you know, right? So we have to make sure all the revenue expenses are there. And so there we go. Three things that they know. The end of August, the company owed its employees some money and salaries. Um, August went by, the company had a loan, and so some interest happened in August, it's the expense. And thirdly, they performed some services, but they never recorded it. Uh, so this is missing revenue they have to do. So prepare the adjusting entries, very simple, there's just three. The very first one is about owing the employees. And so, you know, again, you'd have to put the date, you know, as always, um, debit to salaries, wages expense for $800, because that's what we owe. Uh, and of course, we're setting up the liability, salary, wages payable, credit. For the bank loan, you would take the $30,000, multiply it by 10%. Now, we don't care about that, because all we really care about is the month of August. So 30,000 times 10% times one month over 12. So one divided by 12. And that'll give you your solution. Your interest is $250. So again, at the end of, uh, uh, the end of August, your date would be here. Uh, debit to interest expense, but we're paying it later. Interest payable, got a credit. And lastly, we, we earned revenue, but it's not recorded. For August, again, we have to make sure our August record is accurate. So we're gonna go ahead and record this uh, revenue by setting up an accounts receivable. Accounts receivable gets a debit, revenue gets a credit. And that is the show. How'd you do? Questions? <laughs>